Hey there, Crystal Covington here, founder of Women of Denver, here to share with you another really amazing uh, Women of Denver member interview. We have Casey McClurg, who is the founder and head coach at Endurance Sports Center. She is also studying for her PhD, which is amazing. Um, and we're going to get the chance to get to know her a little bit and find out some of the amazing things she's doing. I'm signed up for one of her challenges, which she can tell you about. But Casey, take it away. Tell us a little bit about your business and career journey so far. Uh, well, I really connect with my story and why I'm here. So basically in 2006, um, I started doing sports and physical therapy training. Um, career was taken off and then in 2009, I got married and you know how it goes. You have the social norms and I wanted to be a good new wife because uh, <laughs> My, my now ex-husband at the time, he was a little bit sketched that I was working with these athletes. So I wanted to, wanted to be that good girl. Um, so I did a lot of things in business development and legislative affairs um, up until about 2014. And this is where things started to get a little interesting. I had a medical diagnosis and I was starting to have my organs shut down. Um, I wasn't responding to any kind of conventional medical treatments. And I figured, you know what, screw it. If I'm going to you know, have this grim diagnosis, I might as well get back to enjoying those things that I used to really connect with. So I saw this used mountain bike on the side of the road. I paid the guy $20 for it. I had 52% lung function at the time, but I went out. And by God, that next day, I rode a quarter mile on that bike. Wow. And I kept at it every day, you know, just a little bit more, pushing a little bit harder. And before I knew it, I started to respond to medical treatments. And then it got to the point that all my labs were normal. And within a year, just from cycling and then making these positive nutrition changes, uh, I was able to come off medications completely. And I'm still on no medications to this day uh, wow. with diagnosis. So this kind of a uh, light to say I was totally empowered by getting out there on my bike. And at some point out there, from that quarter mile transition to that 60 mile transition, I met who I was again. And I was like, you know, I deserve a lot more than this. I'm completely unhappy right now. So I filed for divorce and I changed careers. And I have always wanted to go back to being a park ranger. So I decided I'm gonna go for that. My ex wasn't supportive. My new husband, he's fantastic by the way. He was like, go for it. <laughs> So I uh, went and I, I was doing that for a few years. Uh, basically with that, like I got to do a lot of community outreach. I got to teach so many awesome skills and meet people from around the world. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of bureaucracy that goes along with that. And I got to the point that my impact was kind of leveled out and I couldn't go beyond what I was doing. So February of this year, right before COVID stuff hit, I decided, you know what, we're going back to what I loved. And I started to pursue uh, training and nutrition, coaching full time again. And that's where the Endurance Sports Center came from. Um, basically, what we do now is just seek to empower people of all ability levels through movement and an athlete mindset. That is powerful. You have a you have had a huge transition in your life. And You've done a lot in that story. I mean, you should be famous. <laughs> like, you know, those kind of stories have been for me transformational. I have a cookbook upstairs from someone that had a similar story. It's called the Walls Protocol. And she was someone I admired for a while of taking ownership of your health because things happen to you and sometimes there's not answers for it yet. You know, science hasn't gotten there. So I really, I loved hearing that and love the fact that you were able to take charge and, and change that. And that's something that you can use to really motivate the people that you're supporting. So tell me about, um, so you're in this world now, what's going on in this industry that you're in? What's going on that you're seeing that are people, you know, doing things that you know are wrong and you, you feel like the, the world needs to correct it? Are there things going on that you think are going great and you'd love to support and showcase what's going on? Tell us about your endurance industry. Oh, there's so much going on. So as you all have probably noticed, if you go to any kind of store, the bike racks are cleaned out. Uh, there's been a huge surge of interest with all the COVID closures, and then that's brought an increased awareness of people to their health. Um, 
with that, you probably notice that the trails and the parks, their parking lots are full. There's always people out there, even if it's 7 a.m. on a Wednesday. And what I'm seeing a lot is because running and cycling are more on the low barrier side of yeah. entry, people have decided, let me run, let me go out and bike. Um, there's a lot of newcomers to the sport. And what I'm seeing is that they're not really understanding the risks when they bike or they run or they hike and they're having this incorrect form and uh, incorrect equipment. So things like uh, bad bike adjustments or poor running form and even just these wrong strategies, they're gonna lead to injury. And then the other thing I'm seeing is these people are going out and they're excited, but they're like, going really hard at it and they form these unsustainable habits that are gonna taper off eventually. And there's this disconnect between understanding putting your athlete mindset first having your mind right before your body can get right so those are the big issues that I've been seeing recently yeah. especially when it comes to running and cycling yeah those are big I remember back when I was um, I lived in Detroit for a while and there was an older man that I we had a partnership with at the company I worked for and he would he had to go get knee surgery and I said oh gosh how did that end up happening did it was it just over time and I didn't, I didn't know if it was polite or not, but I was really curious, how do your knees go out so I can avoid it? And he told me, don't ever run with bad shoes and don't run on concrete. And so he said that, he told me this long story about how he used to be in New York City and he would run every day in Central Park in the eighties. And he didn't care about what shoes he ran in and it's concrete. So he realized that that was probably the big, the big factor is not having the right equipment and the right um, running techniques and knowing where to go to make sure that he wasn't injuring himself and long term that ended up damaging him. So that was a note to myself. There are rules around these things and people have mastered how to do it correctly. So I don't end up having to replace my kneecaps when I get older. Yeah, it's a lot cheaper to buy a good pair of tennis shoes than it is on your knee. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And a lot less stress over, you know, and healing and all of that. So good, good advice. Um, so tell us about one of your top recent accomplishments. Oh, I am so excited about uh, December 9th, we had this women's bike fit clinic and it was a, a virtual clinic and we served riders and coaches from across the United States and across the uh, UK. So I had the honor to meet and partner with one of the UK's top bike fitters oh. and we addressed women specific issues and a lot of those were issues that aren't covered openly. Um, cycling is still a very male dominated sport and while they're making a lot of space for women, there's a, still a lack of knowledge circulation. Mm -hmm. So we really went into it and we covered topics uh, that are otherwise taboo. So, uh, so things like genital pain and solutions to help women uh, prevent uh, genital deformations from improper bike fits and helping them feel more comfortable and confident on their bike. Uh, it was immediately accessible to 70 women and coaches and has uh, since then reached over 9,400 women and coaches across wow. the country. So with that, we're really excited. We're going to continue to offer various monthly clinics um, that will be free or very low cost to help educate and empower people with that low barrier entry point. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I That's a huge reach and a huge impact. Um, everything that you're saying, I'm just like, I'm just like, you know, this is early, we're early morning guys, early morning. And I'm getting jazzed listening to you talk about your life and the things that you <laughs> are doing. You are really cool. I'm just getting, really getting to know you over the last couple of months and, and you're pretty, um, you're fabulous. So. Thanks for you know chatting with me today. So um, we're not done yet, but I'm just, I'm just thankful. It's great to have people like you in my network. Um, so what do you like about being a member of Women of Denver? Oh, I mean, you just pretty much expressed how I feel. I mean, when I joined, I felt this immediate connection with all of these amazing women. And the level of acceptance right away just blew my mind. Everything was very warm. Everybody was so uh, inquisitive and curious as to how they could help me succeed. And they, uh, right after meeting me, I've been getting hit up with 
uh, women reaching out, asking how they can help me and how they can support me. I've gotten so many connections and there, it's just full of these amazing women who are not selfish and they just give without reservation. And I mean, if I didn't feel empowered with my bike before, you guys have helped take it to a whole new level. That's awesome. Thank you. We pro uh, probably because we all admire you too. We're just like, oh my God, this woman's amazing. <laughs> um, so tell people how they can keep in touch with you, follow you, utilize your services, learn how to use their bikes right. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, real easy. You can see, I think I've got my little thing on the screen behind me. It's uh, EnduranceSportsCenter.com or Endure Sport on all of the social media stuff. Um, you can email me. It's Casey, K-A-S-E-Y at Endure Sport. You can text, call, um, anything. All of that information is going to be up there on my website. Uh, and then you mentioned that you're joining our challenge in January. So yes. again, we try to do a lot of low barrier things. Uh, so we have a really comprehensive 30 days to 5k challenge where I will take you over the course of January from being on the couch to being able to complete a 5k at an injury free, enjoyable pace for you. And we're going to integrate things like uh, nutrition and mindset, all kinds of great stuff. So uh, you can also join us there. We have limited spots available, but there's still some. So uh, that's a great way to start off your new year the right way. Yes, I'm excited. I did one years, years ago. And now I'm like, can I do a 5k again? I don't I need to get back on track. So I'm really grateful for that and excited to get started. Thanks for taking the time to chat with me today, Casey. Yeah, thank you. I'm so excited. Bye.